Hi, today we are going to talk about uh, wind energy. In particular, we will talk about uh, probability that a wind turbine collides with a uh, rotating uh, wind turbine or a rotating blade of a wind turbine. We all know that wind energy is one of the cleanest forms of energy uh, today and it comes with many, many benefits, which we will talk about in this series of videos. But uh, it also has some negative environmental impacts. And these negative impacts come, for example, uh, regarding the influence on birds and bats. In today's video, we will see that there is a certain probability a bird that is flying around can hit into rotating blade of a wind turbine and that usually can have fatal impact on the bird. The reason is, if you think this uh, as a wind turbine that is rotating, and now if we have a bird that is flying, usually experts say the birds of prey or predatory birds, they are looking to stalk the prey and they don't look, necessar they don't look necessarily in front of them. And as they fly, the blade really sweeps over them and when that happens it's usually fatal. It is usually fatal because uh, predatory birds fly pretty fast uh, so the impact itself is uh, very strong and secondly the rotating blade itself has a lot of momentum and therefore big force that amplifies the impact. Now you might say uh, well these birds are really stupid this would never happen to humans. But you would be wrong because there are many videos that you can find online where you see people hitting with the colliding uh, barrier for example uh, especially drunk people they see barrier up there they walk but they don't expect that the barrier might close okay so uh, let's put this problem into perspective and try to estimate the probability that the bird will collide with uh, rotating turbine so uh, let's say we have uh, an eagle flying uh, at velocity of 5 meters per second uh, trying to find mice. And uh, let's say there is a wind turbine here. Uh, so this is the tower of the turbine. And let's assume it has three blades like this, okay? So number of blades is three. Of course, there are some wind turbines that have two blades and so on, but for now we'll assume it's a three uh, blade wind turbine. Let is, let our fur let's assume further that the radius or the length of this blade is uh, 50 meters, which is a typical uh, radius. So this is R. Further, let's assume that the width of the blade, W, is uh, 2 meters. Okay? And lastly, this blade is three-dimensional object. We will assume for the uh, purpose of this video that it's a rectangular blade. Of course, in a real case scenario is a airfoil, but here we will just assume it's a rectangular uh, blade. So this depth of the blade, we will call little d, and let's say it's one meter. Okay, and lastly, we said this wind turbine is rotating, let's say in this direction, doesn't really matter, and the rotational velocity is omega. And this rotational velocity is, let's say, 12 revolutions per minute. Now to put uh, this unit in the SI unit like the rest of the units, we need to convert this to radians per second. And this is not that difficult because this is 12 revolutions per minute times one rotation per 60 seconds. So we get that it is 1.257 radians, uh, radian, radians Per second. Okay, so this is kind of the problem set up. So let's uh, a little bit think about this problem. Let's say uh, we have again this uh, these blades that are uh, rotating, right? 
and clearly there is the area called swept area of these blades and let's assume that the bird is much smaller than this whole area which is correct like a point then the easiest way to solve this problem is if the blades are not rotating then we just calculate the area of the blades compared to the total swept area and this is the probability that the bird will hit the blade that is not rotating right so what is the swept area total area should be r square uh, r squared pi where r is the radius uh, or the length radius of the whole uh, rotor of the wind turbine or the length of the blade and pi if you don't know what the pi is then you might as well close this video and go and watch some beauty blogger videos so area is then 50 squared times pi which ends up being uh, if i calculated this correctly 7 8 5 4 square meters but the exact numbers are not so important really now what is the area of one of these blades right well let's call it little a b so area of one of these blades is clearly the length of the blade which is r times the width of the blade which is w if i uh, put plug in numbers i would i should get 100 square meters right so i can say that from uh, these two analysis i will call it probability p not probability that a bird hits one of the blades when they are not rotating is a b divided by a but i have to put here three because i have three blades i calculated here area of one blade but remember n equal three i have three blades so i put here three and if i plug in the numbers here it's clearly three times 100 divided by uh, this seven eight five four which should be 0.04 which is four percent so we saw that the probability the poor bird will hit one of the blades uh, while they are not rotating is four uh, percent now let's see how the problem looks like if the blades are actually rotating then it gets a little bit more complicated as we will see <clears throat> So, we first need to address the question that is, uh, what is the time the bird uh, needs to fly through the depth of this, of one of the blades? And that is not so difficult. This time, let's call it delta T, is the depth of the blade uh, divided by the velocity of the bird velocity of the eagle this is e and uh, well this is one over five because i said depth is one meter so uh, depth is one meter and velocity of eagle is five meters per second so this ends up being 0 0.2 seconds okay now <clears throat> uh, in the time delta t blades will make a uh, sweep an area delta s right which means that probability p1 let's call it that the bird will collide with rotating blade is 3 a uh, b which is divided by a which is the same that we had in the initial case plus 3 delta s divided by a right because i have three areas that are swept due to rotation so 3 delta s compared to the overall area now if we find this delta s then our problem is uh, complete 
So how do we find this uh, delta S? Well, it's not so difficult actually. Let's look uh, <clears throat> let's look at uh, this problem. Uh, not this problem. Let's look at this situation. This is uh, one edge of the blade, okay? Uh, at time t, and then it rotates here after time r t plus delta t, right? And then this is the distance it traveled in that time delta t. So I hope you can see from this uh, uh, figure, so this is like a vector, that r at the time t plus delta t is r at the time t plus this increment here. But this increment here is the distance the tip of the blade travels, and this is the velocity of the blade times delta t, right? So I express this vector in terms of this vector and this vector over here. But now I need to find this area. This is also not so difficult because I can take this length and put it here, and I can take this length and put it over here, and then I get one parallelogram. And we know that the area of parallelogram, in this case, uh, the area of this parallelogram is uh, the cross product R of T, R of T plus delta T, right? These two arms. But I'm not interested in the entire par parallelogram, only in half of it, so I divide this by two because I'm only interested in this half. But I already expressed this in terms of the other vector. So you can see that delta S is really R of T cross product, this over here, R of T plus VB delta T divided by two. However, you also know that I'm interested in the rate of change of this area. So delta S over delta T, t is, uh, I hope you know enough mathematics to realize that this is zero, the cross product of vector by itself. And then I get here R at time T cross product velocity of the blade times delta t divided by 2 delta t. Delta t because I divided everything with delta t. And now this is basically where we are getting to the end of this problem because uh, I can further express this. Uh, as I said, we assume that the bird is flying perpendicular to the rotational plane. So this cross product ends up being uh, R V blade times the sine between these two vectors, but the sine is one, and then delta t and delta t uh, cancels, and I get only two. So delta s is equal R V B over two times delta t. Vb is uh, the uh, velocity of uh, the blade, right? And that uh, velocity of the blade can be expressed in terms of angular velocity that we know, omega r. And then <clears throat> I get that my delta s is equal uh, when I put here omega r, I will get omega r squared, this r and this r, times delta t divided by 2. Now I plug in, uh, now in, in fact I can plug in all the numbers and calculate my probability. So I said that, prob I, uh, said that probability p1 is... Uh, is uh, 
probability uh, when uh, when we don't have any rotation right plus the probability when we have rotation and this is called the swept area due to rotation divided by a and now for the sake of shortness I will not plug in all these numbers but you can plug in the numbers and calculate and you will get that this number is 0 0.158 so approximately 16 percent <clears throat> so we saw in this video that the probability that a bird will collide with rotating wind turbine is around 16 percent under these given circumstances you can complicate this problem additionally by assuming that the bird is not going directly like uh, perpendicular to the rotational plane but under some angle and then in this case I hope you realize that the path it has to travel through the depth of the wind turbine increases also if the rotational velocity of wind turbine is higher the same will happen the probability will increase I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next video thank you